And there it was, a coming at him and a coming at him. And all he could do was stand there and gape at it. And then what, Cap? Well, I don't know, Sally, as you're rightly old enough to hear the rest of it. Oh, Cap. Well, the way this doom roar came wheeling along, you might say it was like a great big hoop snake going along with its tail in its mouth. Only maybe more like a, a big, thick truck tire. No bigger than a truck tire? Oh, way bigger. Higher than a man can reach, and all fiery and burning and throwing out this awful light, just as yellow and hot as the sun, and a coming along and a coming along and scorching and shriveling up everything in its way. All right, Cap. So it's fiery and it's big, and you've scared Sally half out of her wits again. Sally, this dune roll is a wonderful North Woods yarn, but don't forget it's still a yarn. Well, you can call it just a yarn, Sam, but all the same. Yeah, I know, I know. Just the yarn, why they call this place Lightning Island? Why are more men and animals killed on this island than on all the other islands in Lake Michigan put together? Well, how do you account for it? You're a scientist, Sam. You're supposed to be able to. Yep, I'm a biologist. I'm not a meteorology man. I suppose it could be caused maybe by some ore condition under the island or maybe some trick air current over the dunes. Maybe we'll know when that mining friend of the doctor gets the shaft blasted up. Sam, can we go down and see the explosives again this afternoon? No, we cannot. I got them safely put away till the expert gets here. And I don't want you playing around with that explosive again, either. I haven't touched it, Sam. Of course I haven't. Hey, Sally, it's almost four. I thought you were going down to meet your father at the dock when the mailboat comes in. Oh, I, I was just going down, except... <laughs> Business is my fourth pleasure, huh? Well, are you still paying me a dime for each one of these things I can find? Or have you got enough? No, no, no. The deal's still on. Ten cents for every one of those mystery drops you bring in. How many you got? Here, three more. I found them out on the dunes. There you are. Thirty cents. Paid in full. Thank you. Sam, at least in an ugly kind of way. Got it figured out yet what they are? No, not within a mile, Cap. Not agate, not like any other kind of mineral that I ever saw. I found a couple more myself yesterday. Meant to bring them up from my shack this morning, and then I forgot to. Maybe you better send them in by way of Sally, don't you think? Yeah, that's right. She'll think I'm trying to do her out of her dimes. Maybe I'll just lose them right out in front someplace. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's light, but it's just as hard as quartz. The doctor said he was going to bring up some mineralogy books today. Maybe we, that'll help us figure it out a little. Now you and Dr. Burgess set your minds to it. Why, you'll run it down, all right. Oh, I hope so, Cap. Say, would you mind getting this cleaned up for me? Hey, sure thing. Thank you. shirt on, don't you think? Too late, Sam. You were going to dance me with a clean shirt as you'd have thought of it an hour ago. <laughs> That's not fair, Jeannie. Here, give me this. Why, if I'd known you were coming, oh. I'd have been down at the dock myself. If you'd known, Pa was lugging eight pounds of sirloin, huh? Oh, Sam, there goes our surprise. You get defending a woman every time. Oh, is that so? <laughs> Come on, Sam. Let's put these things in the icebox. Here's your book, Sam. They nearly pulled my arm off the last 50 yards. Good. Did you find that uh, gold plate? The gold plate, the Kaplan, and some bound reports. Good, here it is. 
Got to be here. Well, I wouldn't be too sure, Sam. I've got some news for you. Doctor, do they say you're the man that carried that sirloin up here? <laughs> well, Molly picked it out, Kev. I just wanted to shake the hand that brought it. <laughs> No. One quick check I was betting on doesn't seem to have it. Well, I could have told you that, Sam. Come on over here a minute. I want to show you something. I took this sample by the Keppel in the physics lab yesterday. Uh-huh. You still keep the others in the drawer up here? Yeah. Sally got five more this week. Mm -hmm. Both of you in favor of French fried onions? A wonderful idea. The Keppel lets you do the frying. Oh. <laughs> oh, look. New one. Can I have these for earrings, Sam? Sure, Jeannie, well, but... Now, Jeannie, oh, I don't no, think Polly, you better... don't get these away from me again. Not unless you prove they're some kind of hush-hush mineral. <laughs> and I'll put you both down as voting for French fried onions. Fine. Hush-hush mineral? What's Jeannie to... Well, I don't want to get too serious about it, Sam, before we know more. What are you staring at? This. Well, it's bigger than the others, but... No, no, I put two of them in there about an hour ago, and look. They got together and made this. Sam, you probably just don't... Oh, no, wait a minute. This thing is doubled in size and weight. Well, maybe they could have fused it. Oh. Two separately weighed 42 grams and 46 grams. Yeah, that's you got 88 grams. This thing weighs 176. It's, it's redoubled. I can't figure it. Well, not much less how the two got together. Hey, Carl. I left that sterilizer open. Maybe that steam under the drawer had something to do with it. Well, let's find out. You know, Keppel said the heat in these drops had some connection with the humidity conditions. The heat? Yes, these uh, mystery drops of ours turn out to have some very curious thermal properties. Keppel hasn't been able to identify them yet, but... Well, look, watch this. Here. Hey, that's hot. Yeah, it wasn't when I picked it up. You mean just tapping it against that drop? Well, they have some unaccountable source of heat. Sometimes when we tap them, nothing happened, and at other times, we got intense heat with fewer taps than just now. Yeah. Well, there's no perceptible change, but I still think you're right about the steam. I tell you what, Sam, let's uh, reproduce the original conditions and see what happens this time. Yeah, that's a good idea. Is this where you had them? Uh-huh, just right. exactly. Okay. So, oh, wait a minute, Carl. Yeah? I have the drawer out about like this. But I still don't see how heat could affect a mineral. Well, as you say mineral, but it could be a kind nobody's ever known. Suppose it came from a meteor. A meteor? Yeah, maybe a meteor that struck along the lake here centuries ago and uh, smashed into bits or cracked up on the way down. Yeah, but with one unique difference. This meteor, if that's what it was, is trying to get itself back together again. And when it doubles its uh, weight, when it does. Hmm. Two and two makes eight, not four. Sam, I'd say we've got a lot of studying to do. Although I suspect it'll take more than a physician and a biologist to deal with this before we're through. Jeannie, give me a chance to change my shirt. I'll only be two minutes. I'll be with you in a second, Jeannie. Uh-uh, Carl. No detours. Last one at the table gets to do all the dishes. Jeannie, I won't just say that that's the best dinner I ever had. I want to tell you that's the best dinner that anybody... Hey, Carl! Carl! What is it? Look here. 
Those, those last two got together all right, and then the two doubles took off. Yeah. Look. The two bigger ones must have joined up about here. Look, yeah. Sam, the door. We're going to swing right through the door. It must be outside. Sally, it was just an accident and an experiment we were trying. Now, it's way past your bedtime. You get on upstairs. We'll tell you all about it in the morning. Oh, it's so early. Come along, Sally. I'll tell you a story while the are taking Cap, it's a mean night out. We could probably fix you up a bed here if you'd like. No, oh, no, thank you, Doctor. I'll head on down to that shack of mine. Then if you and Sam start burning up the island with these experiments of yours, at least I'll be near the water. Well, did you find it? <laughs> no, I'll track out. You beat too much rain out there. Say, Cap. Did you say you had two more of those drops down to shack? Drops? Oh. Oh, you mean those bits of fancy quartz or whatever they are? Yeah. Why, sure, I can fetch them right back up to you now. No, oh, it's too bad out tonight. Just bring them up in the morning when you come, will you? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Oh, and call me on this new phone rig if any of you are stirring in the morning before I am. All right, Cap. Well, then you did get this rig fixed up down to Cap's house. Nobody, uh, Sally didn't tell me. She didn't. She should have. She and Cap have been talking on it all week. Try some more of this reagent. Well, we've got exactly nowhere. I told you Cap likes to play with that thing. Almost as much as Sally. Hello, Cap. How is it down there? You up to your knees in water? <laughs> Sam? Sam, there's something peculiar going on down here. No, no, not about those drops of yours. I, I found them I got right here in my pocket. But there's a funny sign, kind of light out there on the lake. It seems to be moving inshore. Can you see it from up there at the cottage? Wait a minute, Cap. Hey, Colonel. You see any kind of a light out on the lake? Cap seems to think there is one. Is the boat in trouble? Well, he can't make out. It's blowing up too hard. Oh, I can't make out a thing from here, Sam. Hello, Cap. No, Carl and I can't... Hey, Cap. What's the matter? I don't know, Sam, but I'm scared. I'm coming back up the cottage. On the double. What is with Cap? I don't know. He sounded scared stiff. Said he was coming right up. What about a light or something? Couldn't make out. I guess we'll just have to wait till Cap gets here. That thing's alive. It's chasing me. Coming at him, coming at him, and all he can do is stand there and keep at it. And then what, Cap? And then what, Cap? And then what, Cap? I think you better go back to the cottage and look in on Sally. Well, Sam, Lightning Island's lived up to its name again. Poor Cap couldn't have known what hit him. Well, you're a doctor. You said it was Lightning. What else could it be? I don't know. I've been thinking. Remember back in the service, some of those Japs we saw that had been drawn over by a flamethrower? I don't know what you mean, but... Who goes around with a flamethrower on a quiet Lake Michigan island after a poor old-timer like Cap will never harm a sparrow in his life? If you say it was lightning, it's got to be lightning. Well, lightning's pretty unpredictable, Sam. I've seen it play worse tricks than this. Yeah, but it's played too many tricks on this one little island. Yeah. Well, I'll get Warren out Monday to blast through those ore samples. And I guess for tonight, we'd better get him down in the boathouse. Yeah, it's tough enough on Sally as it is, I guess. I'll have poor old Cap stretched out right in the cottage. Come on, let's go. I 
I just tried to ring you down at Cap Shack. Yeah, we took him down to the boathouse, Jean. Seems to be dry and better protected there. Poor Cap. He was so proud about our success with the dinner tonight. And then afterwards, we... Yeah, Jeannie, I guess we're all messing. Probably Sally more than the rest of us. What about Sally, Jeannie? Were you able to get her off to sleep again? She wanted to wait up, but she fell asleep right in the middle of the story she was telling me. She was telling you? It seems to work better if she tells us. This was one of those horrible ones. The cat tells about the doom roller. <laughs> the doom roller? You know, that's what she called this thing that burned its way out tonight. A, a baby doom roller. Hey, Carl. We forgot something. Didn't Cap say you have a pair of these drops in his pocket last night he was bringing up to us? Well, you talked to him, Sam. Sure he did. He said he had two. We didn't find them out in his pocket. This is all he had or all I could find anywhere around him. I don't see they matter now, Sam, but I've been wanting some fresh air, and I'd be glad to go down to Cap Shack and have a look. You want me to? No, no, Jeannie. You stick here with us. I don't want you wandering down to that shack in the dark. We can check it in the morning. Oh, you know, Carl, I've been thinking. The dune roller, that... Tall tale that we've been laughing at all summer. Oh, no, sir, we're just keyed up. No, no, we know that this thing can give off heat, confuse, and double in size and weight. You said yourself it might be parts of a meteor trying to get back together. Oh, sir. Why not? Suppose there's a big chunk of that stuff out there somewhere, a mass that can get hot and move if the conditions are just right. You know, if it's dark and there's plenty of moisture. As I see it, there's just two things we can't answer. Those mystery drops and these death, death, death by lightning. Must be some connection between the two. Wait a minute. Suppose that these deaths were caused by something... something like a giant rolling flamethrower. What kind of four are you making with your two and two now, Sam? Eight, I guess maybe 8,000, the way these drops are behaving. And you think there's a great hot chunk of this out there that these smaller ones are going into and building up? Huh? Well, I think it's possible. Maybe when they're small enough, it might take them years or even centuries to get back together. But after a certain critical size, this thing might gain in momentum. And then what would happen if it got near somebody who's carrying drops like this? Say, we'd better get those two back from Jean. Wait a minute, where is she? It's outside, I'll get her. Hey, Jeannie! Jeannie! Jeannie, what are you doing down in that shack? I thought you might want those missing drops that Cap had, but I can't find any here. Sam, you don't have to shout at me. Of course I'll come back up. All right, get started. I'll meet you on the path, but just get going. No, there's nothing to worry about. Just get started. Sam! Sam, there's an awful light out on the water. It's coming in toward the shack. Hey. Those two drops you've got in your pocket. Take them out and throw them away. Throw them as far away from the shack as you can and get going. But Jeannie, throw those drops away fast. I'm all right now, Carl. It was awfully close, though. Too close. Well, you just rest here for a minute. I've got some work I've got to do. We haven't got much time. So that's what it's all about. You and Sam are really going to try to fight this thing. Let's just say neutralize it. We have nothing else we can do. Why don't we leave this place? Because the only way off the island is at the dock, and that's where this thing's been coming from. Coming through the drops away, that would keep it away from the cottage, wouldn't it? Gene, there drops every place, and this thing may die down for a while, but who knows when it'll start rolling again. No, we've got to take a desperate gamble. We have no other choice. Sam, you're not going through with it. We'll get it, or it'll get us. Have you got that bait ready? Yeah, all set, Sam. Let's go. 
You're not going, Carl. Well, you can't fight this one. Don't argue with me. We haven't got time. You've got to stay here with Gene and Sally. This thing doesn't work. Somebody's got to get them off the island. No, I suppose you're right. <laughs> Give me that. Good luck. I'll need it, honey. Something we could do. Nothing. Except trust in Sam and wait and hope and maybe say a little prayer. Give me one more minute. Just one more minute. Stop. Amy, out of your mind. Get back to that. I thought you didn't wait. Now, wait a minute. There isn't time that things come. Get behind that box. Cover up your head. No, darling, I'm all right. You sure? Oh, Sam. Sam, you must have blasted. This is a thousand people. Yeah, I think we got it under control, at least. So we can get it where it can be studied. I hope that theory works out. Oh. In reverse. I don't think this thing can rebuild if it ever can. No. It hasn't got a chance, Sam. Not after this. We'll never know, Carl. We'll never know. <laughs> 